Okay, let's try this one. Hey everyone, how's it going today? Yuzwa here, and today we are going to be working again on our Spring Boot to-do list application. This is now episode three, and as you can see from what I've got in front of me, we'll be looking at rendering some markup. Precious to-do items on the screen for us. Stick around, and we'll have some fun with it. Okay, so as you can see, I've got things where we left off with them after our previous episode. And what I'm going to start with this segment here, we're going to be actually deleting the to-do list, uh, the to-do list model that we put together in the last episode. I think covering nested models is really important and it's really helpful, but I think that I want to introduce it again later on once we um, eventually down the road, I want to introduce actual users and creating an account, logging into this, and then being able to create your own to-do items. So I envision that that's a more appropriate time to introduce the nested models and relationships between between them as we covered in our, in our last episode. So we're gonna go through here and first I'm gonna increase. Uh, okay, that looks like, looks legible now, okay. First things first, we're going to be deleting everything to-do list. So this is the to-do list repository we'll get rid of. Uh, list creation setup. We need to save it. Basically anything to do. Get rid of the... Have a... Oh, and we have to write a model, get rid of any to one relationship. Okay. Our list is up. Go ahead and restart this to make sure that we didn't get anything. Our debug window pop open here. Back to our browser. Okay, here our welcome screen. We know it tells me that we've got everything where we want it after last time. Okay, good. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to change our page controller and we are gonna return, show you how to return some of these to-do item models uh, into our view, the display and list in our view. So we're gonna update our get welcome that to how Studio code pops in all those things. We're gonna return a string from our get welcome, and one of our parameters is going to be a, a model. And this is a view model that Spring will inject to uh, every every view function. Every view function that you that you have for your app, or that you have for each view in your Spring. So. Let's have this stuff. We still want to generate our to-do item. Set completed to false. The description, hello world. And we'll save it here as we or However, this time we're going to return a string name of the view that we want to present, which is our welcome. And we want to uh, create an iterable with all of the find all okay add attributes there's a method here where we connect up the two items that we are pulling from our uh, to do item repository and we throw them into the view and they'll get oops, get passed into the view with the help of this model add attribute method and so the string that we define here is any kind of uh, reference name that we want to give it. So we want to reference it from the view as to-do items. So I'm just going to uh, label them as to-do items here in the string or in this in this add attribute. Okay, got that out of the way. 
that import okay so now what we're gonna do is let's go ahead and update our welcome view. right now our HTML just this of uh, the welcome string so I think we can do a little bit better than that let's create a doc type fast forward through some of this just to make it easy there um, a namespace or a time leaf all standard boilerplate stuff read through it I edit it adding the bootstrap SS shortly here set up a container for it title called it to-do list call it anything you want In. Clean up a seat this in the future. We'll define a table here, classic ordered striped striped rows. ID description. Body. And so what we're going to do, as you might start to guess, that since in controller uh, went through pulling all of the to-do items that are in our repository, we're going to pull them all into this to-do items iterable list. Then we're going to throw them into the view with this uh, model dot add attribute call. So here we're assigning the to-do items list to the to-do to items. Uh, string referenced. So back in our view, we are now going to reference that same string uh, reference right here with it. You have to use a colon. Markup for time leaf looks a little bit weird. So basically, what we're doing is uh, this this th colon right here uh, lines up with our um, XML NS TH declaration up at the top. So if I called this, uh, let's say TY, um, then I would have to update this preface prefix to be TY. Just keep things easier to understand. I'll just leave it as TH. But again, if you want to change it on your end, all you have to do is make sure that whatever you set this declaration to here is what you fixing the time leaf commands or markup sorry uh, here so what we're going to be doing is uh, we're setting up an each for each loop of our to-do items okay so we're referencing our to-do items with this um, this syntax declaration so dollar sign curly brackets surrounding the to-do items and the individual to-do item that we're working on uh, will be referenced with this to do do declaration. Okay, so let's create a create a way to display our ID. We'll reference the ID field with uh, a th text. So we're going to be creating a a text label and giving it assigning it the value of uh, the to do item and the ID the ID property and we'll be doing the same for description yeah and then for the completed what I thought I would display it as is a checkbox. I want to do here a create a type e box. Checked property will be value of deleted boolean. So if the 
Boolean if completed is true, then the checked property will display a checkbox. Not properly. Sure that's okay, good. Uh, and then it's our table row. Body. Okay. And it's should be auto restarting. Let's go back to our Okay, cool. So we've got our, our header of to-do list. We've got our ID, description, and completed labels on the table. We've got an ID of one, hello world of for the description, and since completed is false, then this checkbox is not, not ticked. So now if we refresh it, what is happening? We see that uh, within each refreshing, go back to our page controller, every time we, re we refresh, we're just recreating, we're adding, we're creating a new model, a to-do item model, and adding it into our database. So let's, let's go ahead and verify that. Let's go back here and log in to our database. Go to our, I'll, I'll have to refresh this from a session. Okay, so we, I'm going, if you remember it, address let's see the address is localhost 3000 slash h2 console okay big print okay so our login was and password was it an admin correct and we see that we're too big okay so if we want to highlight new item select star from two item see that we've got a whole bunch of them now created. We've got a whole bunch of these created. Completed false, date created and modified is now now. Basically the timestamp of when commands were run and then hello world. So our database looks okay. All right, back to our view. Okay, so now just to verify um, that the completed is displaying properly, let's change our value of true start remember that with our uh, VS code extension it should be restarting for us let's go ahead and hit refresh and there we see complete since completed is true it'll now display uh, as, as checked our complete column right on okay so let's turn that back to false then let's go ahead in the markup and let's pull in the bootstrap um, string. So it's, I'm going to cut and paste it from their website. But bootstrap.org. You just Google it. Um, you'll come across it right away. So I'm, I'm, I'm going against their CDN and pulling in their uh, CSS file. That's all we're using for now this and we get a much nicer do list with uh, our columns rows and our data so now when we hit refresh you should see striped rows appear and everything that we want this is pretty cool all right so that is going to be it for this episode um, what I wanted to do it, it is a shorter episode because I think in the next one, what we're going to do is we're going to move some of the model creation work into a proper service. We're going to create some um, ability to add new to do items and edit existing ones right from this web page instead of doing it in the code. All right, I can't wait. So join me next time. Uh, like this, like this video if you can. Subscribe to the channel. And I'll have more Spring Boot tutorial videos for you in the future, near future. All right. Hope you're having a good day wherever you are. And we'll talk to you next time. Peace.